All right, hey guys, folks who are new to the gun world and just started carrying, this video is for them. They, the question is, and I get this all the time, I don't know if I could take a life. I, I don't know if I could kill. And so really I wanted to enumerate a few different things that'll make sure that you have the ability uh, to be able to do so. So we wanna be able to check all these things off and failure at one, maybe failure in general. Got it? So this, a lot of you, this isn't for you. You've already, hey, I could absolutely, if X, Y, Z happened, I would be able to take a life. This isn't really for you as much. This should be shared with someone else you know who would be wrestling more with this question. So let's jump in. First and foremost, and I tried to list these kind of in order uh, as best I could. Uh, as I see it, so this is very subjective. It's my opinion, my thoughts, and it may develop and, and change over time. Motivation is the first and primary one. If, if you can't summon up the, the fortitude to be able to defend you and yours, a lot of times it's because you haven't really thought about it. Uh, we can live in a fantasy land where we think, you know what, people, people really mean well. And surely the psychopath isn't gonna chop me and my family up into little bits if we just reason with them. And, it, it, and, and crime is something that always happens somewhere else. I believe the world's becoming more and more dangerous. I think there's some very spooky, scary individuals out there. Uh, and frankly, diplomacy does fail. And that's why we bring firearms and we're ready to uh, destroy folks uh, who would uh, seek to harm others. So we're motivated not by warmongering, but by compassion. We love people. And so uh, not on my watch. I'm going to defend mine and yours and anyone else that I can, right? So first and foremost, we need the motivation. Uh, part of this will go into having that just grit to be able to flip a switch and then go to work and uh, kill if need be. And, and sometimes we can't have that. A lot of times we have that fury and that's not just being able to kill, that's being able to kill well. Uh, we just want other folks to be able to pull it off somehow and sometimes thinking about the opposite and that's the consequences of failure. Uh, think of if you don't take a life sometimes, you're having to choose really between their life and uh, your life. Or you have to choose, you have to make a decision when that bad guy pushes the fight to you. Do you let your kids die or do you try to kill the bad guy? You, you have to choose between them. It's a mutually exclusive option. There's no middle ground. And that's the only circumstance I'm really talking about. I'm not looking for a fight. I don't want to initiate a fight. This is if the worst happens in that scenario, could you take a life? And I'm saying you must. You must. You must find that internal motivation and settle in advance that if it comes down to them or my family, you will not touch my family. Right? And that's having that motivation. Second thing is being able to manage the fear. You may have the motivation, but when fear, that stark horror just hits you like, oh my God, is this happening? Is this happening? Uh, being able to manage that fear so that you can push through and do really the, the, what you could not really conceive before. And I've got videos on this on, on developing fighter mindset, and I'll put a link below or above or wherever YouTube puts them so that you could manage that fear and be able to rise to the occasion. Got it? Uh, but this is very, very important. And a lot of times we can multiply a lot of uh, time and energy on the range and, and uh, developing different scenarios, but not enough on this one. And this will be a bottleneck. To fail at any one of these might be to fail in general. So you gotta be able to check all these things off. Third is the ability. You have motivation, you may be able to manage the fear, but you don't have any skills. You may not be carrying guns or knives or anything else like that, or uh, you may not have that ability. Uh, you need to be able to get training, get training in martial arts, get training in firearms, get training in edged weapons and whatnot. But we need to have the ability so that even if we decide, if it comes down to them and my family, they're going out. Well, yeah, but you suck. So no, you're gonna die and yours will die as well. This may be a helpful exercise and many will find it morbid, uh, but write a letter to your kids, your family, apologizing for why you didn't save them. I'm so sorry that you're dead or uh, I'm dead or, or whatnot. I didn't train hard enough or I wasn't able to manage my fear. And what it does, and someone will think this is sick, but I, go, go with me a moment on it. Uh, the idea is I'm trying to uh, 
excite a motivation so that I would really be able to handle the reality of what it is. For us, for a lot of uh, people who were attacked, an attack was surreal until it happened. Uh, but it's not something out there. It can happen to you. It could happen tonight. Uh, it could happen tomorrow. It's not surreal. It's not always happening somewhere else. And so that could force uh, kind of a, uh, an epiphany to you that this is real stuff, right? This isn't a video game. This isn't just something that happens in a movie. This is happening somewhere in your city right now. Uh, fourth is the moral implications. You could be legally justified in a shootout, but think if you killed someone and you didn't really have to, you'll wrestle with that your entire life. Some soldiers come home uh, overseas and, and in the action of it all, fighting and whatnot, they're able to handle it well and good, but once they're out and they're kind of working their normal nine to fives or wherever they landed after the military, they're having to sort through the aftermath. And they're thinking of, ah, I don't know if that one was a clean shoot. I don't, I, I, think, I think that was military. I think they throw down a gun, but what if that was a, what if that was a civil, what if that was an innocent? And that just rips them to shred. They're not able to, to process that. Uh, because they have moral difficulties in it. I remember uh, running a, um, a video scenario by in our judgmental shooting course here at Tolorek Group, and Dr. Terry Waller presented me with this thing of, uh, there was a gal who was holding a gun to this dude threatening to kill him, and you could tell immediately from the short interchange that this guy was a dirtbag, he had wronged her some way, but she was threatening lethal force. Uh, and and I, I didn't feel like, based on the scenario I was playing out, that she really wanted to kill him, but she could have. Now, if it was reversed, I probably would have killed him right away. But with her, I, I, you know, I've, I, I just didn't want to do it. And, and I just kind of panicked, and I didn't know what to do. And I ended up trying to shoot the gun out of her hand, and I made the shot in the video game. Uh, but and, and then Doc Waller was just kind of looking at me like, talk me through that. I'm like, I don't know. I just... I didn't want to, I really didn't want to kill her. <laughs> and really I was gambling with that dude's life, but, but you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to police your morality or anything else like this, but this is going to be an outworking of your theological and your philosophical constructs that you've built. And I'm not your dad or your pastor. Uh, now I've heard Jeff Cooper say that. Uh, but anyway, you need to sort through these uh, ideas. Uh, also, this kind of flows into the legal as well. Everyone needs to check the, their you know, federal laws, their state, local municipalities and whatnot for, for their gun laws regarding carry and use of lethal force. So as best I understand, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not gonna think, uh, speak authoritatively on any of this, but I know some states have a duty to retreat clause, which basically means if, if you saw somebody getting held up at gunpoint two blocks over and you could get away, if you can get away, you must get away. There's no heroes that are allowed in the law. You have to get away. In the state of Georgia, I see somebody threatened with lethal force. I may be able to step in uh, and help that person uh, as I understand the law. Don't make any decisions based on what I just said. Again, consult a lawyer or something else like that. I am not a lawyer. Got it? Covered my butt. We're going to go. Uh, the difficulty is, is in some of those scenarios where we'll be like, no, I feel a moral duty to rescue that person because I can, and I love people. I feel a moral duty to rescue and the legal may say, and you're not allowed to. And so now you have these two at odds with each other. And when you have any breakdown in all of these five, it can lead to a freezing. It leads to indecision and it, we call it hypervigilance in the, in the, uh, self-defense community where you're just like, you, 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 you can't run toward it, you can't run away, you can't hide, you just kind of freeze in place. And what, what that is, is all of a sudden you get caught, your brain is overloaded and it shuts down because somewhere in the mental processes you are lacking in one or more of these areas. Got it? Guys, we love people. We're motivated as warrior poets to protect and defend. It, what, it's what gives us energy in our training, but we need to sort out all these different variables if we hope to make our world and our communities a little bit safer of a place. Because it's not good enough just to train hard. You gotta train smart, guys. See ya.